We hear I you. can hear. I can hear. Ah, okay, okay. Can hear you. Sorry, I will start again. <laughs> the report now. Um, yeah, uh, so maybe for the people that are listening to me, uh, one thing they need maybe to know is that I'm working for the GRC, which is uh, the scientific body, let's say, of the European Commission. Uh, when policy officers have scientific questions, uh, they ask us, we, we are a, a team of very uh, high variety of diff different scientific disciplines, and we give our scientific opinion. Then they decide based on other political uh, issues, of course. So that's why maybe I will give after a more macro uh, perspective or on, on the low fossil, fossil carbon economy and on the bioeconomy, because this is what we are asked also by policymakers. Uh, but maybe before uh, I wanted to congratulate you for the great job that has been done. I've really been impressed. It's not just for uh, the sake of um, congratulating you. Uh, you. You have succeeded in gathering a lot of different scientists and PhD students on a very high variety of of perspectives of the low fossil carbon economy, uh, ranging from the um, production of agricultural biomass residues and forestry biomass residues to uh, all through the value chains going through different technological uh, pathways and, and different end use applications, aviation, acoustic materials, etc. So I think you're really covering um, a high variety of the, of the aspects of the bioeconomy and the low fossil carbon economy. And uh, it is great because you are only uh, at the middle uh, in, in the halfway of your project. So I'm really confident that at the end of the project, you will, you will combine this all together and we will have this broad um, overview of uh, what is exactly the low fossil carbon economy, what are those um, technologies and feedstock that we can uh, handle and, and, and use. And, and maybe it will be also clear for us what are the different combinations of uh, technologies we can use considering the, the different assets of the regional territories and, and uh, the mix of end products we can have between biomaterials and, and uh, bioenergy. Um, I also remember, yeah, and, and you, you summarized it at the beginning of this year, of this um, morning, that uh, in the second half of the project, you will also tackle economical issues. Maybe uh, you were speaking about economies, economies of scales, and, and maybe you will go through the viability of the different options that are at stake. And I think it's, it's of foremost importance because for the bioeconomy to take off, we really need options that are viable and that can be um, sold in a way to investors. Uh, I have to admit that for the moment, uh, investors can be more cautious than usual in, in risking their money in, in still emerging technologies and, and value chains. But I still think that um, we are anyway at the right moment for proposing uh, emerging technologies and, and new bio-based products for two reasons. First, because I think now it's very, commonly agreed that we have to go for a green transition. And, and this is also the overall uh, direction that is given by the European Union with this green deal. And we need to uh, go climate neutral by 2050. And the low fossil carbon economy will, of course, uh, contribute to achieve these targets. And also because in spite of the COVID crisis and, and the recession uh, we are foresee to, uh, to happen, uh, there are new uh, public funding that have been uh, opened to uh, exactly uh, those initiatives that go for a greener economy. I'm thinking, for example, to the recovery and resilience plans that are um, funding uh, new projects, greener projects. But I'm also uh, thinking about public funding that also uh, uh, existed before the COVID crisis. And for example, the um, European Circular Bioeconomy Fund that has that have already started to support new facilities in the area of bio-based waste and recycling. So I think you're really, you're just on time. Um, we need a transition. There will be more funds uh, to, to, to support this transition and also uh, super important before 
those technologies develop and commercialize, etc. We absolutely need this environmental assessment that you have done at early stage, so we can then reorient if needed um, the, the pathways. Uh, this is uh, for the comment I have on your project. Now, I just wanted to very quickly uh, share my perspective from the GRC on, on um, how to tackle this question of the bioeconomy. And, and, and because I'm sitting a bit in between the policy uh, area and, and the scientific area. And you, you may be surprised because for you, the low fossil carbon economy is something very concrete. We have seen many examples this morning. You are able to calculate uh, different indicators and, and to, to provide assessments. But for a policymaker, it's, it's not so concrete. And uh, 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 yeah, maybe I will share my screen in order to support um, my statements with uh, more information. Let me see here. Can you see my screen? Yeah. So now if I'm sitting in between scientists and policymakers, uh, policymakers will tell me, OK, what's the bioeconomy? What the low fossil carbon economy? And how can I monitor it? How can I make sure that I will um, um, propose um, adequate policy option in order for this to take up? Well, in fact, it's not so easy for us because um, uh, we don't know exactly what are these economies, what are the activities that are composed of these economies, how to measure them, and then how to uh, provide a sustainability assessment. Very quickly, if we speak about the scope, what is really this low fossil carbon economy? Um, taking an economic perspective, what are the activities that we consider? Well, in order to um, identify them, we could adopt a biomass flow approach saying, OK, all the sectors, all those activities that um, produce biomass are part of the low fossil carbon economy because they are, they are the source of it. And then, of course, the biomass conversion is also part of the low fossil carbon economy. I'm speaking about food and feed, biomaterials, biochemicals, biodetergents, etc., and bioeconomy, bioenergy, sorry. I will also add the, non, the renewable energies that are not non-bio because they have a potential for substituting the fossil carbon within the economy. And, and till here, it's, I think it's commonly agreed that those activities belong to the fossil carbon economy. But then I could go even uh, further uh, through the biomass flows. Once the biomass is produced and converted, it will be transported, it will be traded, it will be offered in restaurants, etc. Are those sectors part of the low fossil carbon economy? Should I monitor them for the policymakers? This is uh, still a question that is not solved. And if now I broaden the scope to the whole bioeconomy, you may know that the European Commission has its own definition of the bioeconomy that involves all those sectors that I um, um, identified with the biomass flow excluding renewable energies non-bio because they are not based on biomass. But the European definition of the bioeconomy also includes bioeconomy services and ecosystem services. So what are those bioeconomy services that they should include in the monitoring? For example, in, in Finland, it is very clear to them that natural tourism is a bioeconomy service because natural tourism could not exist without um, not the natural environment. In other bioeconomy strategies, we also consider all the knowledge uh, provision, like the scientific research, what you're doing, uh, that is needed in order to better understand and, and prepare the bioeconomy as part of the bioeconomy. We could also argue that administrative activities like the elaboration of bioeconomy strategy or even the elaboration of agricultural policy, etc are part of the bioeconomy because they support its development. But um, those three bullet points that I added here are, are potential activities that we could in, uh, include in the bioeconomy, but there is no common agreement. Then if you go uh, through the different bioeconomy strategies that exist in Europe, some integrates them, others not. It, it's not, it's still a bit vague. But OK, let's assume that we decide what are the, 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 the activities that belong to the bioeconomy and, and we start monitoring it. Now, next question is how to measure it. 
we could argue that uh, what is important is a substitution of fossil carbon. So we will measure bioeconomy activities according to their potential to substitute uh, fossil inputs. So we will measure the proportion of bio-based inputs into the total inputs of an activity. That's fine, but then policymakers will tell me, okay, but since the beginning, our bioeconomy concept for us included agriculture as a whole because agriculture is the source of the bioeconomy, it provides biomass. You're now telling me that because agriculture is also using um, oil fuel for machineries, it's also using petrochemicals uh, uh, for pesticides and fertilizers, that agriculture is not entirely part of the bioeconomy, it's only partly part of the bioeconomy. I will say yes, according to this approach, that's right. But we could also now use another approach, which is looking at the biomass content of the final products that are produced in the bioeconomy. And in that case, the manufacturing of table would be considered part of the bioeconomy only to the extent um, of the biomass content of the table, this wooden frame. But then you will, you will ask me, okay, but now if we look at the bioelectricity, it was clear from the input approach that bioelectricity is part of the bioeconomy to the extent it uses bio-based inputs. But if I look now at the final product, bioelectricity is the same product as conventional electricity. What's the biomass content of electricity? So I do not want to be too long here, but I just wanted to, to show you that uh, finally the bioeconomy, I think, was a policy concept at the, at the beginning. And it's not always easy to match scientific uh, method of measurement of, um, or, and of monitoring to really capture this concept. So even though we would have found a solution about one of the two approach using or combination of the two, then we would have also to um, uh, agree on how to measure this proportion based on physical quantity or in, in value. This is, there are two options on the table. And now what do we do with those bioeconomic services that have no biomass content? I come back to nature, nature tourism, which is not providing an, an, a final product containing biomass content. How will I measure the economy that arises from nature tourism? tourism or the economy that arises from scientific research and how now I value ecosystem services. So there are a lot of different pending questions. And we come to the end with the interpretation of the potential monitoring indicators we could uh, provide to policymakers. Okay, let's say now that we are able to measure the bioeconomy and, and we monitor it over time. Finally, What's the result we want to have? Do we want to have, well, is the more the better? The more people working in the bioeconomy, the better, the more uh, wealth creation in the bioeconomy, the better? Yes, in a way, yes, because the bioeconomy pursues this uh, objective of um, competitiveness and goal, and goal and job creation. But we also have to take into account this circularity and resource efficiency goals. It's not because we increase the activities in the bioeconomy that they are more resource efficient. We need to integrate here this circularity. We also, I think, need to uh, integrate the, this issue of final demand within the, the reasoning. And, and it, it's uh, not done in, uh, in many occasions. Um, because, for example, if you look at this recent publication of Llorente and Bense, they are arguing that even if we increase recycling, reuse, and repair activities, those could still be embedded in the current linear model. They could just be an additional option to provide more final goods, more final bio-based product at the end of the day. Um, and so we really have to rethink maybe this model and be sure that we are not uh, implementing a bioeconomy just for producing more. It, 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 the, the overall idea would be to produce what is necessary for the society, not for the overconsumption. And finally, of course, all those activities have to stay within the ecological boundaries and we have to limit the, to, to respect the limits of the planet. So you, 
I wanted to just to to wrap up that maybe for something that se that seemed to be very concrete this morning with identified feedstock pathways and and, and final products. When you scale this up at the macro level and you start to monitoring what's going on, is th are those activities taking up? It's not something so easy to do, so concrete. It's still, it remains still vague. And maybe uh, while investigating, we will uh, little by little find solutions and, and a common understanding of this concept of bioeconomy that was um, initially not um, invented from a scientific uh, perspective, I would say. With this, I will thank you for your attention and I will leave the floor to Laurie and maybe question and answers. Many thanks, Teresia. That was uh, very insightful. Always nice to know what's going on on the other side, uh, on the policy side for us, because at the end you are the, um, the receiver of what we are doing. And, and my question is for you, but you don't need to answer it now. And then I will also open the floor uh, to everything you've seen this morning. But then what would be useful for you? <laughs> I'm just thinking loud, is it useful to cluster? Okay, this is the bioeconomy, but now it's of course a path that we've took. But at the end, what we want is to go low fossil carbon. Couldn't that be a more useful indicator than to have a global pathway as you presented with all the background processes and the electricity input, how much fossil based carbon remain when we supply all these goods and services? I'm thinking and talking at the same time, but I'm wondering, yeah, what could be a useful um, indicator to consider all the different sources of carbon that I showed earlier. So also, I mean, you can take it from the atmosphere, it doesn't have to be from the biomass and it can be good still, and you can decarbonize. So yeah, no, yes, you're carbon. absolutely right. I think it is a, a one dimension that has to be considered um, if we are really able to substitute these fossil, uh, fossil input into the economy. But then policymakers will also ask me, so how many jobs are created? Uh, are we creating wealth? Is it green growth? So our difficulty here is to combine different indicators, some coming from uh, physical uh, science and some others uh, uh, um, considering also those social socio economic impacts. Uh, so we will have to find here a way of combining uh, different uh, information. <laughs> 